Hello and welcome to the Iceman channel. In today's video I'll be revisiting the Chameleon Ultra UI project. There has been tremendous amount of development since my last video and I'm curious how it works today. In today's video we will look at where to find or download it, how to run it, uh, connect to the Chameleon Ultra, the firmware update that's now uh, available, uh, look and feel, uh, talk a little bit about the reader and simulation mode. With that said, feel free to feed the algorithms, smash that like button and share among your friends. But first I need to rearrange things and we go to the next video sub page. When you go online to GitHub, here we go, you'll find that the Chameleon Ultra project now or repository has over 515 commits. So this is the software, firmware uh, updates to the Chameleon, which is amazing. If you scroll down a little bit down here, you see compatible applications and a link to Chameleon Ultra UI. If you press that one, you come to GameTech Live's Chameleon Ultra repository. And you see now it's 201 commits. So it's been quite much activity. You can download this. This is a Flutter app, so you can run it on the Android and iOS as well. However, we're gonna run it on a computer, on my stationery. You see all these pictures here. So I'm looking forward to see how this is. And look how many stars we got. Yes, give them some stars, man. What you do need to download this, you can't go to any releases because there are none. You have to go to actions and you have to take the last actions and then no, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you have to go to a publish app. Here you go. <laughs> and then one hour here. Click on the top one there. And if you scroll down a little bit, there's an app bundle. It doesn't help either. Um, why is this an app bundle? Okay, let's go with this. Ah, it's because we go to apps. That might be dumb. Let's do this again. What is this? Build apps now. Uh, publish app? No. Uh, hold on. Huh, warnings. Interesting. Let's go back here because in the beginning of this one he says that you need to download it if you click there. And it doesn't do that. So go for all actions again. Take the next one. What I'm looking for is an app bundle here and there's none. Click on this one. Ah, here you go. That's interesting. So you have to go for the build app. And I don't want to install a version of it. I want the Windows runtime executables like this. So you click on this one here. Why do that? You've seen I downloaded before. My trusty little Firefox. If I open up here, I do this, I do that. I do this. Take that one away, oops, take that one away. We look inside, this is a FIP file, looking good. We can extract to here. Now to look a little bit more because it got here. Let's go there. And I'm just gonna rename this one because it has million ultra UI. Here we go. Easy to be inside. And as usual, you want to run this one. And if I do this and I go here, this is easy. So this is when you start it up. Uh, here, this is what it looks like when you start it up. And I need to hook up my little chameleon here. It says bling. And uh, nothing happens, but if I press the refresh button here, it will detect the Chameleon Ultra. Boom. And I press on that one. And it looks like this one a little bit bigger for me. There you go. Oops. 
Where is it? Did I close it again? I did. Oh, sorry. Oh, man. One more time. Yeah, maximize it. Thank you. All right. Now, I had here before I got an option to say that my firmware version is 1.0, but this number here is a build number that we use now to identify the firmware so on it. It says it was updated, and if I just pressed update, it actually just went and updated for me, and it flashed the device up and down, which was kind of awesome in one way. So let's see what you have here. Device settings, enter DFU mode. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, flash latest firmware, flash zip, animations, button configs. So you know the chameleon has two buttons on it, uh, A and B buttons. You can then say what kind of things gonna happen. So if you either you can disable it, or you say I want to press one click, it goes forward. So go from what slot one to slot two. If you go for backwards, it will go from slot two to bare. And backwards to slot one and then to slot eight again. Clone UID means it just tries to take the read the UID and go over it. Uh, so this is the two settings for the A and B button. You also have, this is a short quick press. You also have now a long press so you can have dual functions for every button. So if you press a long time you can go forward and backwards. You know, so you can jump. And if you use BLE, it says the pin code here, which is the default pin code, and you can wipe the bindings in your Android phone or iOS phone and do other stuff here. I don't do that because I am connected with the USB port, so I can just go out again. That looks nice. For go to read mode down here, it says. So this is a thing with the chameleon. It has two modes. Either it's in reader mode when it tries to read the tags or it is in the, what everybody knows as the emulation mode or simulation mode where it tries to simulate a complete tag. Each slot can simulate LF and HF but you can only have one active so you can load up HF and LF images, values, IDs both of them for a slot, but you can only have one active at a time. So if I choose HF, that's what's going to be. And when I look at things, I look at things how I would do things. I mean, how I would work with a device. I think I would like to have that like seamless, so it like swaps between. Because if you have a chameleon, you know, you have it in a pocket, you don't want to take up the phone and try to program it to say which mode it has to be. I wonder if you can decide if it's going to be in reader mode for a specific slot and then you have uh, simulations and other slots. It's, it's their potential there but it's a little bit confusing. Anyway, let's get back into this. It looks nice, look at that little thing. Uh, on the right side you see as usual slot manager. This looks much better than the last time. Uh, you can see here, it's nice smaller slots. You see the green icon versus the red. It means that this, oops, I'm not gonna click on it. Uh, I'm gonna click here. That this slot is disabled. If I go for enable and go out, you see it becomes green. Now, it means that you can actually disable slots uh, or enable it. So you don't have to have all slots open which I don't know why you wouldn't have, but I guess if you want fast, yes, swap between two slots, one, two, one, two, by one button press, that would go faster, I guess. Um, but I also think it's one part of confusion with Chameleon that you actually has to enable slots, uh, because it's not enabled from, from the get-go. And that's confusing, but this makes it a little bit better. In the, you also see an indication that this slot has an HF or LF, where you can empty it. Interesting. You can also say for the uh, My Fair Classic emulation, what, that it has different kinds of magic modes where it emulates different kinds. So generation 1A answers to the Chinese backdoor commands, uh, if I do that. And generation 2 allows to write into block 0 with normal write commands, like you do on an Android phone. 
Here is if you want to use for block zero UID SOC and ATQA from the dump file, but some uh, memory or some readers identify that and they have a different uh, SOC or a different ATQA, so they don't allow that. So you have two different services, so it's good for that. And then you have collect nouns to run the MyFair, uh, yeah. And partial authentication um, steps so you can recover the key from MyFair Classic. And uh, for this slot, then I guess you can say that this slot should be to collecting nonces. Interesting. The right mode, interesting. You can decline right modes. You can deceive. I don't know what deceive means. Normal would be that we allow uh, MyFair Classic tag to act like it should. And shadow mode would be that it allows to read uh, or write. Right, of course, and then after it did the right, it would just forget about the right and return to uh, the previous state, which is kind of awesome. I think this can be a little bit more arranged in the sense of uh, belongs to what the slot the slot does. I don't think this, you know, all this here. Uh, it's very dedicated to the MyFair Classic. Seem to be very tight connection between slots and what's on it. But it's interesting. So if I click on, oops, if I click on this one here again, uh, I thought we're gonna see an empty MyFair Classic up here, but I didn't, interesting. And if I click on this one, oh, no, back again, uh, I click here, and it's the same thing here, interesting. Okay. So how about I enable all my slots? I wonder if I can do that a little bit easier. Can I right click and do that? No, I can't. All right. So that's a little bit uh, many clicks, I guess. Come on. Thank you. A little bit. I mean, I'm fast in clicking apparently, but uh, it has to talk to the device when I do it. So I guess that's what it is. Uh, Save cards, if I had any dumps read out on dictionaries, will be shown here. Read card, mm, let's see. I can do that because I have a dual magic card here. So I have both a MyFair Classic card running on this one and an LFEM 4100 card. So this should be able to read both of it. So if I go for read here, it should just Keys like this because it's default my for classics. Mm, can dump partial data, thank you. That worked. Save as save. Read a message. Okay. Uh, if you go for LF read, it could read. It could read it. So this card is a dual, so we could read both. I can save that one. Uh, demo LF. All right, cool. Now what? Okay. You can go to the right card, it's not implemented. And then we have settings. How to expand. Ah, uh -huh. so this is, ah, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, okay, that's cool. System theme, oh, that's light. Ooh. No, I like my dark and I like my indigo. If I do, ooh, nice, look at this. Colors, always colors, 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 blue. Oh, I like that. English about, hey, look at that, lead developer. Fukushi, uh, Apple, Schrodinger's developer, translator. Um, and all of them here, look at this, isn't that beautiful? Yep, yep, well done, well done everybody. And debug mode, yeah, I don't wanna do that yet. Let's get back to save cards. Ah, look, here you can see the cards that I had before. I can delete them, I can look at them. Okay, almost over. It's improved, right? It's a huge difference from before. So if I go here, I can now select one of those two dumps. If I do that and I do LF, so I can charge up to slot one to have both that end as match message and the LF demo. It doesn't have a key B for sector zero, but it's an MDEF, an MDEF message, it's okay. It doesn't need it. And it's enabled, magic, no, no, no. So I have, I wonder which one is active now. 
under, go under, go under. So I have both here. Okay, cool. Let's go for a CD cam down. If I just enter this one little machine here, let's see what happens. Right. Find one F1. I wonder what that is. Uh, let's see, I need to be in slot one, which I am, so okay, cool. Uh, cool. Slot two, slot one. Alright, let's see. Blue, you see the colors there? Take it away. Uh, oh, no, you see, oh, you see the color there? Green, it's, yeah, you see green. If I, ooh, I have to do this. If I go down there, oh, I didn't see it before it changed. If I take it away from the field, take it back again. Yeah, turn blue. So that should indicate something. Right now, I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see. That one says 1B143, and this one says 15. So that's completely different. So why is that different? Let's see. And how about I actually do it with the big screen? <laughs> Easy for you guys. Uh, this is TSP resets version of it. So if you look there, you will see that it's turned blue for some seconds. Yeah, we saw that. That blue indicates something. I'm curious what it is. Let's go back into, oops, no. Let's get back into here again, and we take away the LF. I'm do normal, I'm do this. All right, cool. So we go back to the so you can we do this. So fifth law of her. Doesn't show the same thing. It's very odd. All right, let's see. Let's go back to here, transition, oh, let's go here. Don't know about that. Uh, oh, no, uh, click on this one, I uh, can't do that. Okay, I'll click on this one and click on that one. Okay, I have to go here, I have to go here. Here, I have to go now. What does this one say? Okay, it's not that one. Interesting. Uh, okay, let's, let's delete both, all right? Empty. Um, oh, do you disable? No, I enable it. Players want to be empty. Which is good because now it says nothing. And now we do this and we add an LF. Which this reader doesn't read. Interesting. Uh, interesting. We go over to this one. Uh, no, back. And do this, take away this one, like this. Yeah, so that works. I'm very curious now. Uh, when does it go from reader mode to simulation mode? Maybe it does that. So I think with you, I actually do that automatically, um, which is kind of awesome, so I don't have to keep track of that. Cool. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go back here, and I'm going to turn this one off here. I'm going to say that uh, a lot of things changed in this uh, new GUI. Let's move on this one here to rearrange the images I have. It's been a massive improvement since last time. I think it's amazing. I think they've done a great, great work with it. Uh, I'm curious how it looks like on iOS and Android and let me know in the comments below what you think about that and how you work with it But it has come pretty far away from uh, last time Yeah, well done And by the way, did you know that Lab 401 did an interview with uh, Game Tech Live uh, And you find that video on uh, Lab 401's uh, YouTube channel uh, so yeah, thank you everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video.